Back in the year 2000, the first generation of Skoda Fabia went on sale and it's fair to say it launched with a bit of a bang. It was named the 2000 Watt Car Car of the Year and time has proved it to be a very worthy winner. Now, however, I'm stood next to the third generation of Skoda Fabia and while it's a very different car, there is one thing that this car has in common with that first Fabia. This is the 2015 Watt Car Car of the Year. For all the many good things about the Skoda Fabia, we're actually probably starting with one of the weakest parts, and that is how it drives. It's not to say it's a bad car to drive, it's just that it does everything else so well. And if you go for the pick of the range, which is, in our view, the lower powered 1.2 litre petrol, then it is a fantastic car to drive. The other engines, the 1 litres, are the same versions that you get in the smaller City Go, so it does struggle to pull this car's slightly bigger bulk when you come to overtaking faster roads etc. The diesel engine, which is what we've got in this car, is not quite so good around town but it is a lot more comfortable when it comes to overtaking and higher speeds. It is however a little bit noisy, it gets quite gruff especially when you're moving around town. As far as the rest of the drive is concerned it's sort of perfectly good rather than mind-blowingly exciting. It is enjoyable to drive but not quite as much as say the Ford Fiesta and the ride is good out on country roads etc but it does pick up on a couple of potholes around time so it does fall just short of perfection. One really good thing though is the gear shift, it's very light and quite precise which means it's perfect for town driving. The Fabia has always been a tall, spacious little car, but this third generation is even better than the ones that have gone before. Up here, for example, you get a huge amount of adjustment both on seat and wheel. The seat goes back and forward, obviously, and up and down, as does the wheel, goes in and out and up and down. The steering wheel and the pedals are nicely lined up as well, so you should be able to get comfortable in here, whatever size or shape you are. And because this is quite tall, you also get big windows up here, and these pillars are relatively thin by modern standards. And all that means that you get a cabin that is light and airy and fairly easy to see out. And although this is not the most exciting looking cabin in terms of sort of materials and design, etc., it's all a bit basic and chunky looking down here, you do get this flashy looking colour touchscreen as standard. The basic versions get a five inch screen as standard, whereas the higher models get this six and a half inch version. Now, although it looks like something that is perfect for a sat nav, unfortunately, Skoda is not offering one of those at all. The Fabia is one of the tallest cars in its class, only the Honda Jazz sits taller. So, as a result, it's not really much of a surprise that there's a huge amount of space in here as well, plenty of headroom and a good amount of legroom. Now, if you move into the middle seat, then you do sit a little bit higher, but because there's so much headroom, there's still loads of space up there. This floor is ever so slightly raised in the middle, there's a bit of a tunnel there, but there's plenty of room, so you should be able to get three adults across the back. This is still a small car though, so three adults might start to grumble at the end of a longer journey, but for shorter trips, you'll be absolutely fine. The boot is a good size and shape for the class, but best of all is all the clever little touches you get back here. Things like the storage net, places where you can tuck shopping out the way, put a bottle in there, there's all these hooks here and little shelves up around there. And there's no adjustable boot floor on the hatch unfortunately, but there is a little system whereby you can take the parcel shelf out, secure it a little bit lower down so it acts as a shelf, and you can even tuck it away like that. There's loads more practicality in the rest of the cabin as well, so rubbish bins in the side door, storage pockets on the side of the seats, and a decent sized glove box as well. The only slight quibble as far as this car is concerned, practicality wise, is you get quite a high boot lip here, and because of that fixed floor, and because the base of the seats are fixed as well in the back, when you drop the seats, they don't fold totally flat. That aside, practicality wise, this is about as good as it gets in this class at the moment. As well as all that space, another thing that is common to all Skodas is a really competitive list price, and that is, funnily enough, the case with the Fabia as well. If you're going to walk into a dealer, then you will hand over less cash for this than you will for the equivalent VW Polo or Ford Fiesta. And partly because of that, the PCP deals are very competitive as well, so you'll end up paying less on a monthly basis if you go for that way of funding it as well. The only thing it's not quite as good at is holding on to its value. The Polo is the king of that in this class, but it is still very competitive. 
When it comes to CO2 emissions, this car is up there with the very best in the class as well. So if you're running this as a company car, then again, you will get one of the best deals that there is out there. Equipment levels are good across the range. You get things like Bluetooth, DAB digital radio, and a USB connection, all as standard, but the basic trim does miss out on some crucial things. We'd go for the SE trim, which is the middle one, because that gets stuff like air conditioning as standard. It's a big loss on the entry-level version. You also get things like alloy wheels, an upgraded stereo, and rear parking sensors. SEL versions get climate and cruise control, an automatically dimming rear view mirror, and little controls for the stereo on the steering wheel. This car has also earned the maximum five-star rating from your NCAP, so it's safe, affordable, and well-equipped. One of the most important things to do with the Skoda Fabia is to pick the right version. If you go for the lower-powered 1.2-litre petrol engine in SE trim, then that is the 2015 Watt Car Car of the Year. It's not that the ones either side at the top and the bottom of the range are bad cars, they're not. It's just that that is a truly fantastic car. For more information on the Skoda Fabia, search for Skoda Fabia on whatcar.com. But while you're here, do click subscribe to keep up to date with all of our latest video road tests, previews and reader test teams.